If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own first before listening on. In part A, we are asked to determine the acceleration of the system. And the key word in that question is system. And we can define our system in many different ways, but the most convenient way in this particular instance is to define the system as all three blocks together. We can put a little circle around them just to make sure that we can see that system. And so in essence, what we're saying is that the three blocks can be combined into a single block. And the mass of that single block would be the sum of the individual masses. So if we add together one kilogram, two kilograms, and three kilograms, we get six kilograms for our system. And we can see that there is a 42 Newton force being applied to that system. And so we can label that. And to determine the acceleration, we can use Newton's second law, which tells us that the net force acting on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. Now keep in mind there are actually two other forces acting on this block. There is the downward gravitational force, which we can label mg, and then there is the upward force that the surface is exerting on the block. That is known as the normal force. But what we have to realize is that the normal force and the gravitational force are actually canceling each other out because they are equal in strength or equal in magnitude. So the net force becomes the 42 newtons. And again, the mass is six kilograms. So what we'll do is actually solve this equation for the acceleration, and then we'll plug in the net force as well as the mass. And of course, to solve this for acceleration, we can divide both sides of the equation by the mass m so that it cancels out on the right-hand side. And then we'll plug in the 42 newtons for the net force and the six kilograms for the mass. And this will give us the acceleration, which indeed turns out to be seven meters per second squared. And so this is the correct answer to part A. And since acceleration is a vector, we have to specify the direction. Since the net force is pointing to the right, then the acceleration also would be pointing to the right. And so we have the final magnitude as well as the direction of the acceleration. Now that we know the acceleration of the system, we can move on to part B, which is asking us for the tension in the cord connecting the three and one kilogram blocks. So it's asking for the tension in this cord right here. And one way of finding that tension would be to draw a free body diagram for the forces that are acting on the three kilogram block. So let's go ahead and do that. So on the three kilogram block, of course, we have the 42 Newtons that's pulling on it to the right. And then we have the tension force which is the result of that cord being connected to the three kilogram block. And that tension force is pulling against the block. So it's gonna be pointing to the left and we can label that T. We have the downward gravitational force, which is Mg, and then the upward normal force. Once again, the normal force and the gravitational force are equal in magnitude. So they're going to cancel each other out. And we can now turn to Newton's second law, which again is the net force equals the mass times the acceleration. Now for the net force, we have the positive 42 Newtons, and we call it positive because it's pointing to the right, and that direction is traditionally designated as the positive direction. And then we have the negative tension force. It's negative because it's pointing to the left. So we could write 42 Newtons minus the tension force equals the mass of this block, which is three kilograms, times the acceleration. Now, we determined the acceleration of the system earlier. Notice that each individual block is accelerating at that same rate. So if the system of three blocks is accelerating at seven meters per second squared, then of course each individual block must also accelerate at that same rate. So we can fill in the seven meters per second squared here. And we can then multiply out the right hand side. And of course we would get 21. We could subtract 42 from both sides. So we get negative t equals negative 21. And then basically we can just divide both sides by negative one. And we see that the tension is equal to 21 Newtons. So this is the correct answer to part B of the question. And now on to part C, which asks for the force exerted by the one kilogram block on the two kilogram block. Now, 
in order to understand that, we can draw a free body diagram of the two kilogram block. We know that it's accelerating to the right because all the blocks are accelerating to the right. And that must mean that there is a force that's pushing it to the right. And indeed, the source of that force is the one kilogram block pushing on the two kilogram block. So that's this pushing force right here. We have the gravitational force mg and the normal force, which are going to cancel each other out because they're equal in magnitude. And so this force right here is the one that we're going to be looking for. The net force equals mass times acceleration. And this force right here will be the net force. So we have F is equal to the mass of the two kilogram block, which is two. And then the acceleration, which again, we found earlier as seven meters per second squared. So we multiply that out and we get 14 newtons. And that force would be pointing to the right. And so that's the correct answer to part C of the question.